diving helmet. South Australia's marine board divers use helmets such as this to investigate wrecks and inspect ships and wharves. Air was fed to the helmet from a large puff above water and lead shoes were also worn to keep the divers upright. Hmm. I think that's a bit earlier than Sharky's I reckon rescue you thing. Trouble with moving. <laughs> there used to be a submarine rescue diver. Equal to the morning of shipwreck victims was celebration of heroes. Like today, heroism in the 19th century was all the medals illustrates the bits. Money and song became the full press coverage. When the Ad Miller was wrecked in 1859, two survivors walked for 50 hours uh, to reach a telegraph and call for help. In 1860, the governor presented the Board of Trade Medals to Ad Miller rescuers for gallantry and saving life. See, the medals were presented on behalf of the following and British Empire. Local heroes again received adulation of thousands from the wharfs of the Port Adelaide to greet the clan Reynolds survivors in 1909. Wow. Nice class, huh? Yeah. Here's a head, but I don't think it belongs in that one. No, I wonder. No, I don't think it belongs. What's the point there? Look ahead. The beauty of the Star of Greece. The beauty of the Star of Greece is so that it's sunk near the lumber on it. The beauty of the Star of Greece belies its tragedy. Its figurehead represents a Grecian lady with a gold leaf coronet. Built in Belfast 1968. Yeah, that's right. That's what a restaurant down there is called that. Okay. Right on the Star of Greece. Jetty. Yeah. yeah. Built in Belfast 1960, the ship traded between London and Calcutta before it was wrecked at Port London in 1888. Huh. Chinese lucky number, but not so lucky for them. Oh, we can go there, have a look from above. Especially the one out at the power field yeah. with the fighter jets. Yeah, put it out on the back one. How's it going? Two thumbs up. Great. Yeah. Okay, they've been up in the snow now. They've ended up with snow now. Oh, snowshoes. <laughs> well, these are the Antarctic as well. These snowshoes were used aboard the Antarctic exploration vessel Y Earp. What call an Antarctic? The yeah, Y Earp. The cowboy name. Yeah. They were donated to the museum by the Commonwealth Navy Stores in Sydney. So Douglas Mawson, Antarctic explorer and professor of geology at the University of Sydney, had been instrumental in convincing the government to build an Antarctic exploration vessel in 1946. Imagine trying to get through the ice with that. Yeah. That's it. It's a strip of a grand family at the end of four hours of Russia Road to a dedicated job. Wow. Check out this model. Model. Yes. Wow. For sure. Well, that. Yeah, it probably nice. took 10,000 hours or something yeah. like that. As long as build it, build the ship. Lorries are building ships. 
Okay. He's got a bit of content, not a bit of that. In the bottle? Yeah, no, probably the other one. Bigger than that, bigger than that. Okay. Maybe that big, I suppose. Yeah. A little sail isn't that on them and crap like that. That's amazing how they didn't ship it in the bottle. Isn't it? We've got about half a dozen of them at home. Okay. Okay. Astray. Not a good place to go now. <laughs> no. British Admiral was wrecked in 1874 at King Island of Astray with the loss of 79 lives. The figurehead floated in Astray for seven months until it was retrieved by a ship bound for Port Adelaide. Oh, that's how it's ended up here. Yeah. Okay. It was sold at auction to local resident, Mr. George Thompson, who displayed it in his African garden for 50 years. Wow. Ah. Wow. Oh. It was displayed at yeah, a Mast head of a boat that lost 75 lives yeah. in his garden. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, he probably didn't know that. Yeah. In 1938, his widow donated it to the Nordic Museum in memory of her husband. No. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Wait. Wouldn't expect it to be at Tantanula. No. I've been to Cave to Tantanula. Any law, two master The regular trade between Port Adelaide and Western Australian ports run down badly damaged by the Australian while anchor on the Rotten Island. Oh, got hit by another boat. Yeah. 20th May 1887 and later converted into a hole. Oh. That Rotten Island, Western Australia? Yeah. And a Nicholson. One of many owners, Captain John Vickers of the BB line, Port Adelaide, bought the vessel in 1872 and used her in the voracious sugar trade until 1894. Re register closed in 1926. Okay. This one, this one looks pretty uh, Claymore. impressive. Yeah, it's like a Viking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. The consequences of the storm were a blown out project, ripped mainsail, and skipper's toilet smashed in. Some carpenter things? Yeah. At four in the morning, Walker went aloft to remove ice from the four upper I don't think they're for human. <laughs> Half an hour later, we were heaving the yard aloft with the capstan. A gasket snagged on the weather clue, and the second main year... Well, imagine, imagine having this for an antique at home. Yard and, hey? yeah, yeah. and how much it'd be worth. Yeah. The hole was carried away, the yard came tumbling down. Bought one of those old houses and you found that sitting there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We moved yeah. the yard line and the line gently from a slippery pitching rigging. This one's hard to read. 